Hey, good afternoon traders. This is uh, Trader Tim from over at eminimind.com doing a Monday market analysis video uh, as well as a, a trade recap for today. Uh, before we get into the uh, e-mini S&P trades, I wanted to talk about the uh, bigger picture here in the SPY as well as the Dow, NASDAQ, and Russell. So we're sort of in a... Um, 2-2 two, two split with those four top line figures. If we look at the the same 50% retracement that we've had drawn up for going on three months now, we've got the target at the negative 23 has been touched and now breached and we're on our way. The next stopping point would be the uh, minus 61.8 uh, on the SPY. Now if we go to the NASDAQ, we have a similar situation where we are we're well beyond the highs from February. Uh, we're sitting in that 50% retracement long. We've gone through the negative 23 and we're on our way to the negative 61.8. For the other two, the Dow and the Russell, a little bit weaker, have not broken its highs from February and on our way to its negative 23% target. And same for the <clears throat> same for the Russell, having broken highs, uh, on our way to the negative 23% target. So I think we can get there uh, with the Dow and the Russell getting to the negative 23, and then the SPY and Nasdaq possibly making it to the minus 618. Um, we've got some individual stocks, you know, like Apple, um, that are just really on a tear. Apple makes up a, a big portion of you know a lot of index funds and. Um, some of these uh, market funds. And so uh, that's definitely been helping uh, push the market higher. And so as we kind of move through this week, we've got a handful of economic news announcements coming out. Uh, GDP will be on Thursday, yep. And uh, we could easily, you know, make our way, if we flip to the SPX for just a minute, uh, make our way to what would be like a 3,500. Uh, just to make it an even round number, I mean that's only 70 points away from where we're at. So it might seem like, you know, an awfully big move in the uh, continuation going through highs, but it's certainly with the with the Dow and the the Russell not quite reaching its negative 23 yet. I think we've got room uh, on the upside there, which will also help um, the S and P and the uh, NASDAQ lift as well. So if we turn over to the uh, ES, um, VIX is still super low, but not quite as low as it was back in February, but pretty low relative to what we'd seen uh, in March and April. So in February we were down in the mid-teens, now we're kind of down the low 20s. So good environment for intraday trading. Um, three trades today. And I just want to run through those really quick. Um, the first thing I did was uh, just drew up from highs to lows. At that point, it was about 25 minutes into the day, and we made sort of the first full halfway back. Uh, it actually looked like this to low. And oh, let me grab this high. So it was the first high to low, full halfway back for the day, uh, and it traded <clears throat> right at the top of the hour, about half hour in. And so, um, you know, you have you have two options. You can take the trades right on the five minute without seeing if there's any support or resistance there, meaning you just place your order there, you put your stop in negative 61.8, and you just are very mechanical. You take all of those setups in the five minute for the morning session, those first two hours, and then just set your target down to negative 23. The other option that we use is letting the five minute trade, so drawing the 50% retracement up on that five minute chart, and then taking the first setup that follows on uh, this chart on the right, my 512 tick chart. And so that's what I did here. I uh, drew from high to low, and um, 34, 15, 75, and then that took us down uh, again to that same target the uh, of the 15 minute. But by utilizing the 512 tick chart for trades that aren't as clean as this, that might you know trade at the 15 or at the five minute 50 percent, but then go through it 
and then go on to fail the the 60 win eight um, that helps to you know eliminate some of those losses so yeah you might miss out on a handful of uh, winners that really rip uh, perfectly uh, right at the 50 percent on the five minute but uh, by you know jumping to the 512 taking that first setup that occurs after the five minute in the same direction um, you can increase your your winning percentage so uh, that was the first short um, just by trailing you know your stop uh, you can you can do a number of ways as far as exiting um, first targets are nice to uh, lock in some gain and then uh, either target the 15 minute trail your stop or or a little bit of both you know if you've got you know three contracts on the ES is a nice number three six uh, those make good increments because you can do you know one 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 you can have a first target, you can have a fixed target, you can have a trail stop, or if you've got six contracts, you can go two, 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 you know, two at a first target, two at some fixed target, uh, two at a trail stop, or, or some variation of that. Um, and then the second trade that's set up uh, was kind of the opposite, a low to high retracement. Actually, excuse me, before we hit the, the, the long, low to high, we traded what I consider the counter trend, um, you'll notice these two horizontal lines, those just represent the top and bottom of the first 30 minute range. So the high for the first 30 minutes and the low for the first 30 minutes. Uh, technically, if I draw this up again, um, we didn't break the short until you know we crossed up above 34.18. So that made this counter trend long, sort of not really valid. It was a nice trade, um, but you know we were still sitting in the short, and at that time it you know it looked something like this, not really a super you know a clear downtrend hadn't really broken that downtrend yet, so I, I didn't take this counter trend long, but I did do over here the counter trend short, and that was just from highs to lows. It uh, dropped back into the first 30 minute range, didn't quite line up exactly with the top of the range, but you know, it was, it was uh, three ticks away, so, so not too far off. But I like these because typically you can go from um, the top of the range down to the bottom of the range, just as we did here, you know, top of the first 30 minute range down to the bottom of the first 30 minute range. And so um, I chose to trail my stop behind the 60 win 8 of the next retracement and it ended up getting taken out here just above that 3420 mark and uh, then we got into this kind of tricky spot where we were at a halfway back long for the day and so you know I had gotten out of the short trade the long had traded and not only did it trade but it broke the full halfway back short it broke the swing high and so you know, I had the, the first two winners, so I decided to go with the long like this, and that ended up uh, taking me out um, at uh, 34, oh, was it in 1850, I believe? Um, so just below the, the 60 win 8. And uh, we came up, touched that first 30 minute high, and then rolled over and completed to the bottom of the first 30 minute range. So, um, you know, when you step back and look at the rest of the day, not really anything to kick yourself for. We hadn't really dis established a strong trend in the morning, and so um, it ended up being short, short, long as far as the, the three trade setups went. And, um, you know, when you have a larger retracement set up on the five minute, you know, that typically is the one that you want to go with. Uh, because it's going to have more participation and more weight. And if it does break down, so we had a short fail, and then we had a long fail, and when you have two setups like that, back-to-back -back fail, whether it's a short, then a long, or a long, then a short, you're typically just going into a sideways range, and there's really not much to do after that. And... Um, you know, really, as we look to the rest of the day, up until, you know, the rally at the close, not really much to do. So focusing on that morning session 
And then I know some people like to focus on the last hour of the day and just kind of avoiding the middle um, unless you have a specific uh, middle of the day strategy. But, you know, for me, trading the morning and then uh, at certain times I'll trade the close. But typically at the close, what I'm doing is uh, putting on or managing uh, overnight swing trades in uh, either stocks or um, sometimes options to hedge something like a... Um, you know a big rally in the in the S&P like we've had. So uh, that's kind of a wrap for uh, for today as we head into you know the remaining part of the week. Just kind of getting things started, but we're already up into some uh, risky territory, if you will, because we've established another gap today, uh, closed bullish, and so tomorrow if we gap up, uh, we may not really get many opportunities or, or even a single opportunity to get into that uptrend and you don't want to get caught just going counter trend you know shorting all day long if you have a situation uh, like we did today where we came back into the first 30 minute range we broke the swing low uh, from that uptrend and you're just you know trading what you see on the chart and if the signal gives you a counter trend trade uh, then so be it, you know, it's worth taking. But I'm not going to just short at highs just because I might feel like we've gone too far. That can really bite you and you can just end up, you know, stop out after stop out after stop out. Um, I'd rather take a stab or two at getting in the long trend. And uh, if that is the case tomorrow, if we open and we rip and, you know, we're just not pulling back, um, you know, you can use a buy stop above a high. So like over here, we have this little cluster of highs. You could put a, um, you know, a buy stop above the high. And then if we break out, market punches through and you can jump in that trend. Sometimes that's the only way to get in if the market is really ripping. Uh, but, you know, it's usually pretty clear. You've either made like a really clean triple top. This one's a little bit messy just because the first leg is higher than the second two highs. But, you know, it becomes pretty clear if uh, the market's kind of not pulling back and maybe knocking its head on some a little bit of a resistance, but the trend is clearly up for the morning, uh, that would be a, a good opportunity. Almost something like this, where you have this huge run up, a bull flag, you know, just putting a buy stop above this cluster of highs. If we pretend that, let's say this is the open and we just rip off the open, um, that's a way to get into the trend with the momentum, but um, only on really strong days where we might gap and the market just... Uh, doesn't really want to give us any kind of pullback. So if you have questions, uh, leave them in the comments below. And uh, tomorrow morning, uh, as we do on every Tuesday, live trading session. And you can check that out at eminimind.com slash VIP. Thanks, and have a great week.